In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lightning Ridge seems to be an unlikely place to be associated with international competitive diving events. And yet this week I watched a short documentary about how Lightning Ridge got an Olympic swimming pool, an international standard diving centre, an indoor gym and a basketball centre. And it all started from the seed of an idea which grew and was nurtured and bore fruit abundantly. In 1988, five young girls were tired of the hour drive each way to Walgett to train for swimming. So they combined their personal savings and with the support of their parents and then the town, started to raise money to build a swimming pool in Lightning Ridge. This seed of an idea meant that first, a swimming pool was realized and then the indoor gym, the basketball center, and most recently, an international standard diving center. This world-class facility in Lightning Ridge, the most unlikely of all places to host it, is now attracting people to the town because of these girls' passion and vision. This seed of an idea has grown into something much larger than those five girls envisaged in 1988 when they wanted to save two hours of travel from their swimming training. This seed has given life in abundance. Throughout the weeks of this Lent, I've been talking about life. From Ash Wednesday, when ashes were sprinkled on our heads, reminding us of beginnings, but also new life springing from the ash. I've been talking about living life fully through Lent, not focusing on self-deprivation, but for those who are counting, it's only two more weeks till the chocolate's back, but instead focusing on living life fully, living as God intends us to live. Over these weeks, we've looked at lives of promise, lives of obedience, and last week, lives of love. And this week, I want to suggest that we're called to live lives of abundance, as we have been given to abundantly. The image of the seed in the Gospel reading talks to us about the abundance of life. One seed bearing much fruit, bearing seed which is life-giving, life-sustaining, and the promise of life for the future and the potential of life. One seed plus one seed plus one seed, life. This is abundant life, life in all its fullness. It's life lived fully and in the end, not just about life given for the future, but life for the future which also bears the mark of the past. It is the seed which is planted deep and grows to full maturity and passes on that gift into the future. It's a sign of hope. It's the seed planted deep within our hearts. The Greeks who come to Philip know about this seed. They've heard about Jesus. They want to see Jesus. But more than that, they've been drawn to the Christ who speaks of life, life in all its fullness, of life lived now, focusing on the things of God rather than, a f rather than filling life with things which distract, a life of service, not a life of bondage a life of honour, eternal life, a life of abundance. In our first reading, we hear from Jeremiah. Jeremiah, who didn't have an easy life as a prophet, or well, none of the prophets did because they spoke words which the communities found difficult to hear. But Jeremiah especially found himself speaking words to people who had shut their ears shut their ears to words which were of life. And the truth of these words, which struck deep, led to the difficult and life-threatening situations 
in which Jeremiah ultimately found himself. But in the passage we hear today from Jeremiah, which is a portion of the passage we heard last Sunday evening at Evensong, Jeremiah speaks these words of comfort, of consolation, of drawing back to God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It's not going to be like the old covenant, a covenant which was broken, a new covenant. This will be a covenant written deep into their hearts. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they teach one another and say to one another, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. It's not a covenant of head knowledge, but of knowledge in their hearts. For their God dwells, their God is known, from the greatest to the least. It's not a covenant of fear, but a covenant of relationship, of love and of forgiveness. And it's a covenant of life, in which their iniquity, their sin is no more. And in this forgiveness, this abundant forgiveness, there is abundant generosity, abundant love and abundant life. The seed of God is planted deep within our hearts and hopefully we live out the fruit of that we live out the fruit of that seed in our lives in our relationship with others in the values and beliefs that we share it's about sharing the goodness and the blessings that we've received abundantly and inviting others to share in that gift as well this time next week we'll celebrate palm sunday and begin our journey through holy week through that week, we will walk once again the path of our Lord to an upper room, to crucifixion, to the tomb, and to the joy of Easter morning. Last year, our Easter celebrations happened behind our closed doors, deep in lockdown. We felt the pain of the journey. We felt the pain of separation. But this year, more than ever, we are called to rejoice in the new life, which is at the heart of our celebration of Easter. For this year, we can gather on Easter Eve, gathering in darkness, kindling a light, and then sharing that light, tentatively passing the light one from another, until at last this enormous place is filled with light, the light of Christ, the light of which we hold and share. One plus one plus one. Light and life in all its abundance. This Lent, I pray that we have had the opportunity to reflect on what our last Lent was, on what this last year has been for us, and to recognize that we have the opportunity to live life fully, abundantly, generously, obediently, and in love. That we've had the opportunity to reflect, that we've remembered that we're called to live lives of promise, obedience, love, and abundance. And these are lives gifted to us by God and as we have received, so we are called to give. This Lent, give thanks for life, for the life that we share in all its abundance, to the glory of God. Amen.